All right. So the main thing here was, and this is what everybody seemed to say, was you're going to take advantage of the fact you got a metal floor for one thing, so it's going to conduct the heat away from the water quickly. It's going to freeze on the floor almost instantly, right? So you're going to spray some of this stuff on the floor to make it slippery, and then you're going to maneuver the butcher's block opposite the door, so it's going to go from here, right? You're going to probably all push together, right, from the wall, and you're going to slide this thing across into the door, right? Okay. Once you, you're only going to push it from about there to there, and then what's it going to do? Slide. slide. It's going to slide, and it's got almost no friction, so it's going to maintain its, its constant velocity until it hits the door, right? And it hopefully breaks the door open. Okay, that's good thinking, all right? So let's talk about the physics of that a little bit. So what did you... What'd you do to the butcher's block? We removed acceleration. We removed friction. Okay, you removed friction, and that part where you're pushing against the wall to get the thing going, describe that part, because that's the key part. You did something to the well, butcher's block. You aligned the direction, the direction of your force, because if you're not pushing off the ground, there's less force you're pushing the block with. Ah, uh, okay. But if you're going off the wall, then you get more force. Okay, good. And so, so there's probably two important things you did there, pushing off the wall. One of those things is that you have better, you know, it's hard to, the floor is slippery. But the other thing is all of your force gets directed in the direction of, of displacement, right? Instead of going like that, that, that. Right. Okay, good. So, so what did you probably just maximize? Work. Work. Because work is force times displacement, displacement along the lines of force. Right? So in this case, the force and the displacement lined up. Okay, good, good. So you, you did lots of work here. Uh, let's Yeah. Like you lock all the bad guys lock it into the closet. Okay, so we we maximize work. F D or F delta X. Good. But what did that do? What did that accomplish? You did work on the block. It increased the force. Okay, it increased the force. It increased the amount of energy the block had when it hit the floor. Okay, so you, you invested something in that block, right? Energy, maybe, I would agree energy might be a good candidate for what we did. Yeah. We did some work on this thing, and we invested something in the block that was then transferred to the door, right? Okay, we got to investigate that relationship a little bit. Let's let's do a little simple experiment. Let's take let's take this basketball. Wait, could you say, guys, could you say that uh, we did work on the block to where once it gets to the door, it would do work on the door? Okay, good. Because now, and here's where the 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 literal meaning of the word work maybe starts to make a little more sense here, right? You invested something in the block in order to enable it to do some useful work, right? In this case, breaking open a door, right? If I pick up a basketball, I'm doing work on the basketball, right? The basketball has a certain mass. I apply a force through a distance, right? And I do some work on this. Well, what, what does that accomplish? I mean, now if I drop the basketball, I could kill a spider, right? I just did, it enabled me to do something useful by doing work on the basketball, right? Okay, let's do a little experiment here. We're gonna, we're going to, together, we're gonna do some simple physics. So I'm gonna get a mass on this thing, 1.324. Okay, somebody write that down, 1.324 kilograms is the mass. All right, let's, Okay, data, clear all data. OK, 
Okay. So let's um, somebody come over here. I need an assistant, please. What? I need maybe maybe two assistants. So I need one assistant to hit the collect button, and one assistant, Richard. Or oh, oh, Lawrence here. Okay, Lawrence. Good. All right. So Lawrence, so you're going to you're going to catch this ball like right about here. Okay, so it's going to fall towards the detector. Okay. How many scientists does it take to? Yeah, put your hands kind of on the side, like so, down a little bit, down a little bit, like right there. Perfect. Okay, but just get them out of the way of the detector. Okay, is that pretty much right over it? I'm thinking. Okay, hit, hit. Go ahead, hit. Go. Nope. Okay. See what kind of data we got. Let's check it out. All right. She's. How did that happen? Well, she still was able to execute the experiment. And you should have had Richard for that. That was. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's let's set this thing up here. Oh, what the heck? I think it might have been so getting her hands. Okay. Maybe. How do I get the position? Okay, I gotta go. Experiment. Data. Column options. There we go. Oh yeah, you know what? I think. Get Richard to do it. Do you think yeah, that, uh, or do you believe that, Lauren? I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you believe? <laughs> Graph options. Okay, so let's have y-axis go from bottom negative two to positive two. How about? Okay, let's have. Time go from zero to three. Oh yeah, I think we just. I think, yeah. that, I think we got to do it again. I think we just got the hands there. Yeah, we got to do it again. But let, let's set these up though. <laughs> so on this one, we'll go negative four to positive four. We can. We can adjust this later. <coughs> okay, got to go again. Got to go. So hands kind of just out here. Uh, yeah. Lauren, you got it. Okay, ready? Yeah. And go. Let's go again. I think that one was a little bit better. Okay, ready? And go. I think we got good. I think it was right there. Yeah, I think we, we got, got good it. data right there. Okay. All right, let's try this. So. I know, I need more of that stuff. It's, it's crucial. You gotta have germs. Excess. So y axis will go negative seven. Okay. Let's go from point one up to about point seven. Okay. And here we can go from point two. Yeah, where is the sensor? That's a good question. Was it underneath? To one point five. Yeah.
that's good enough. Okay, down here, velocity. Oh man, that doesn't look good at all, does it? It looks like maybe the part right in the middle is right. Yeah, the velocity doesn't look good though to me. I think we gotta do this again. Because we gotta get good data on this. Siler, seriously? Siler, <laughs> come do Siler's spot. I'll take Siler's spot. Okay. All right, here we go. We'll start. I'll, try, I'll drop a little bit closer. Okay, ready? And go. Anything? Well, it, it, it went off there, so we might. Let's check it out and see. What are you doing? Why are you making the voices? You have a problem with my voices? Duh, I do. It's just mine. Let him be in. Lauren, you're not the car. Seriously, don't be sorry. Two, four, six, eight. Just cause a little bit of mental at Okay, so you guys tell me, based on that velocity graph, where was the ball in free fall? Velocity. Uh, zero. zero. Right around zero point nine. Okay, is when it started? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, because what should the shape of the graph be for constant acceleration, velocity time graph? Flat. Should be flat, right? Right. The, the position time graph should be curved, because that's going to be quadratic, right? But the velocity time graph, acceleration is the slope of velocity time graph, right? So we want to grab a part, like let's say, oh, I'm about right there, over to like there, maybe even like right there. Okay, for sure that looks like a linear part, doesn't it? Okay, so what did we just grab? We just grabbed... Position, let's see, so we're going from, yeah, the, the, those little sections right there, didn't we? So the, the position is going from about 1.31, 1.131, that makes sense, right there, down to about 0.949, yeah, that makes sense, okay? Okay, so that's the only part of the graph where we're getting reasonable data, right? This thing is, it's, it's grabbing data at, a, at 30 times a second, but there's only a very small part right there where we're getting good data. Okay, so that all the rest of this is just wasted. That's the part when the thing is in free fall. Okay, let's make a little table out of this. So if we export this as CSV file, and we'll call this... Basketball. Dot. We don't have to. And we're going to put that in our physics about. Okay. And we'll just do that. Huh? 
Yeah, me too. Huh? <laughs> okay, so there's there's our data, right? So we only want the part. We can get rid of some of this stuff. So we can get rid of time. We don't need the time column. All we really want is position and velocity. We can, we'll get rid of the acceleration also. But so we want to keep the stuff. So that's that's where our data starts. Yeah, so everything in there we can just delete. And then we're going to go down to there. Right? So everything down there I can delete. And that's all we have left. Right? Yeah. Notice the the acceleration is changing a little bit, but it's you know, it's essentially around 9.8-ish, right? Okay. So that's our data. Now let's think about this. So let, let's let's calculate the the position. If the position ends up being 0 0.949 and it starts off at 1.131, how about if we assume? Let's just kind of reverse engineer this. Let let let's work this backwards and let's say okay from the part where where Lauren caught the ball, which was at 0.949 meters above the detector. Okay. That's at least that's when it start it stopped being linear. Okay, so if we were to start there and pick the ball up to the highest point, which was at 1.31 meters, let's call that height. How about we'll make a new column that we're going to call height, and that's just going to equal this measurement minus 0.949, right? So this is in meters. And we end up at zero, right? So if I'm picking the ball up from here up to its highest point, that's a distance of 0 0.182 meters. Everybody with me? Yep. Okay. Let's calculate the work done. If we had to pick the ball up to that point. So we're starting off at zero, and we're going to pick this ball up that distance. So the mass of the ball was what? Let me zero, wrote it down. No, wait, 1.324 kilograms. And so if I want to calculate the work that I do against gravity to pick it up from 0 to 0 0.182 meters, how do I calculate that? You got it? No. <laughs> so it's going to be... Kilograms. So that's in kilograms, right? How much force am I... If I'm picking this thing up at constant speed, how much force am I applying to the ball? No. Oh, maybe. How'd you get that? Because if you're going at a constant speed with this thing. Right, but that, that's not a force. Oh, that's a mass. 9 .8. Times 9.8. Okay. So the force that we're applying then, let, let's, let's put that and make another column here. So this is height in meters. Okay, this is going to be force in newtons. And isn't that just going to equal... The, oh, we need a mass column too, don't we? Yeah, better add another column here. Oh, come on. Oh, no wonder. Okay, so let's add mass kilograms. And the mass was 1.324. Okay. So the force in newtons is just going to equal mass times 9.8. Good. Okay. And so if I want to figure out the work that I did in picking this thing up, what do I multiply it? By displacement. Okay. So by h, right? So if I want to calculate the work done by me. That's just going to equal force times displacement, right? Yep. Make sense? Okay, and so we can see here how much work it takes to lift that thing up to all those different distances. Okay? Make sense? Yep. All right, so now what about the work done by gravity if I let this thing go? 
it's going to be the same. It's just force over distance. Backwards. It's going to be backwards, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, everybody agree with that? Because gravity, it's, it's going to start off here. Go ahead, Nick. What were you saying? Force over distance. Work is work is force times distance. Right. Force times distance. Okay. So if I were to start at the bottom here, think about the work done by gravity. As this thing moves up, gravity is pushing down, right, instead of up. And so if the force is down and the displacement is up, what's that tell you about the work? It's negative. Right. Okay. So let's just make we'll make so another that, column here. Is that the Earth doing work on the wall? So yeah. Right. We'll just call it work done by gravity. Okay. Let me, I should make this bigger. How do I, because you guys have a hard time seeing that. How do I make these, I can make the cells all bigger, can I, if I go? There's the zoom button. How, on the, on Excel there is? Mm, well, down in the right corner above the time. Very bottom. Like in Very the bottom eight. of that tab. Right there? Yeah. Oh, yeah, there we go. Perfect. Okay. Whoa. Look at that. So work Whoa. due to gravity is going to be equal. So it's going to equal the distance times force times negative 1, right? And so the sum of those two is just going to be 0, right? Okay. So then would you agree that if I were to start up here and let the thing go, Gravity has done, by the time it gets to the bottom, it's done about 2.36149 joules of work as gravity pushes it from there down to there. Yep. Right? Okay. Why? Yes? Uh, at the very bottom, why does it have a force but not a work? Is that because distance is zero? Yeah, distance is zero. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and so, like, if we wanted to start gravity up at the top instead, we could just as easily say, well, let, let's call this zero, right? See what I'm saying? So let me just change that one a little bit. So we could say, this might be easier to see. It's just going to be, uh, it's going to be 2 point, whoops, 2.3. I'm just going to fudge this a little bit so we can do this quickly. 6, 1, 4, 9 minus that. How come 2.36149? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Okay, so. And what's that really trying to be? Zero. zero. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty close to zero, isn't it? So if we just take this column, let's just make those measurements. Let's write those as numbers. And we'll go decimal places, we'll add some decimal, oops, add some decimal places. Like that. Good enough? Or more. Um, okay. I have a question that's yep. related. Mm -hmm. When will we be doing the uh, heavy shape project? Oh, soon. Yeah, we're, as soon as we get done with a couple things here, we're, weather's getting better. We're going to go into... Ginger houses. What's that? Ginger houses. Yes. Ginger houses would work, yeah. Okay, so then here's my next question. Okay, so we did it, we did some useful work, right? Gravity is investing some energy in the ball when I let it go, right? Okay. What? I mean, how does it? How does that manifest itself? Because we ought to be able to take a snapshot of the ball as it's falling and say, oh, okay, I get it. That's that's the energy that gravity invested in it without having to just reverse engineer the work that we did by picking this thing up against gravity. Right, there should be some energy associated with just the motion of the ball, right? Yeah. Which is which is going to be like if I start off right now, the, the ball has zero motion, right? But I did some work to push the ball up to this point against gravity, right? If I let it go, I'm getting that back somehow, right? Okay, so you guys have heard these words before, right? You could say that this is a form of potential energy when I do work on this thing against gravity. If I set it on a shelf up there, it's stored. If it rolls off the shelf, it could fall off and do some work, either good or bad. It might break a glass. Say it again. Is it kinetic to raise it? Uh, okay, well, yeah, but I can raise it arbitrarily slowly. 
See what I'm saying? Is it any movement? But it's the energy in the object. The ball is Right? Okay, we'll, we'll get back to this. Right. Right. Okay, I'll store all this stuff. 